27, it says that Toshian will be the last prophet. That means the praiseworthy prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will be the last prophet, which is the same thing mentioned in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, which says, Hatamun Nabi'een, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the seal of the prophet. Let's analyze the prophecy of the beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. If you read the Buddhist scriptures, that is Takkawati, Sinna Sutana, D1176, it gives the prophecy of a Maitri. And this prophecy is repeated in most of the sacred scriptures of the Buddhists. It says that there will be coming a Buddha by the name of Maitri, who will be a holy one, a supreme one, the enlightened one, endowed with knowledge, will have wisdom, will be auspicious, will have knowledge of the universe, will receive eternal law, supreme knowledge. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, at the climax, and at the goal. He will preach the religion of truth, same as the Buddha. But this Maitri will have thousands of followers, while Buddha has only hundreds. This prophecy is further repeated in the sacred books of the East, that this Buddha who will come by the name of Maitri, he will have thousands of followers while present Buddha has only hundreds. It's also repeated in the Gospel of Buddha by Karis, page number 217 and 218. Now if you analyze the word Maitri, it means a beneficent one, a merciful one, a person who's kind, who's loving, who's merciful. And one Arabic equivalent word for Maitri is Rahmat and our beloved prophet. The Holy Quran mentions in Surah Al Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 107. Mama ar salnaka illa rahmatil alameen. That we have sent thee not but as a mercy to the whole of humankind. And every chapter of the Holy Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, begins with a beautiful formula. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And the word mercy is mentioned in the Holy Quran no less than 409 times. So this Maitri, which the prophecy speaks about, refers to no one but our beloved prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Further, if you read in the Buddhist scriptures, in Mahapari Nibbana, chapter number 2, Verse number 32, which is also mentioned in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 36, it says that the Buddha will not differentiate his teachings between exoteric and esoteric. The Buddha should speak the truth and should not have, his knowledge should not be like a closed fist of the teacher. That means whatever he teaches, should not be something which is partly open and partly closed. And we know our beloved Prophet spoke about the Holy Quran in public. And even today, the Holy Quran is recited in public. And he said that none of the Muslims should hide the teaching of the Holy Quran from the other human beings. If you further read in Mahapari Nibbana, Sutana, chapter number 5, verse number 36, in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 97. It says that as the Buddha had a servitor by the name of Ananda, so will the Buddha Maitri to come will also have a servitor. And the servitor of the beloved prophet was Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, who was given by his parents, his mother and father, to the holy prophet at the age of eight. And the prophet called him as his beloved son or the beloved little one. And Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he stayed by the Prophet at the time of war and peace, even in good times as well as bad times, till the end of his life. And even during the battle of Uhud, even at the age of 11, he stood by the Prophet and protected the Prophet when he was surrounded by the enemy. Even in battle of Hunayn, when the archers fired at the Prophet, he was there to protect the Prophet. 
you can very well compare him to Ananda, who even when the mad elephant rushed at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Further, if you read the Gospel of Buddha by Charis, page number 214, it gives six criteria for the Maitri. And all these six criteria fit perfectly to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It says that he will receive enlightenment at night. When he receives enlightenment, he will be lit up. He will die a natural death. He will die at night time. And we know how the Daisha, may Allah be pleased with the said, that when the Prophet was dying, there was no oil in the lamp, and she borrowed oil from the neighbor, indicating that the Prophet died during night time. Point number five says that when the Maitri will die, he will again be lit up. He'll become bright. And last is, once he dies in the physical form, he will never appear in the physical form in this world, which refers to no one but a beloved prophet. There are several prophecies. If you further read, in the, in the Dhamma Padda, Sacred Books of the East, Volume 10, page number 67, it says that the Tathagatas, that means the Buddhas, they are only preachers. And the Holy Quran says, in Surah Gashya, chapter 88, verse number 21, it says, Fazakkir innama anta muzakkir. For your job is to deliver the message. The job of the messenger was only to deliver the message. His job was not to convert the people. Same Dhamma Padda, Sacred Book of the East, volume number 10, page number 67, says that the criteria for attaining salvation is righteousness, which is similar to as mentioned in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Asr. Chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, which says, Wal as innal insana la fikhus, illa ladina amanu, wa amilu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqi, wa tawasaw bil sab. That by the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deeds, those who exhort people to truth, that is, to dawa, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. These are the minimum four criteria for a person to enter Jannah according to the Holy Quran. And one of them is righteousness. Let's discuss the prophecies of a beloved prophet in the Jewish and the Christian scriptures. Before we discuss that, I would like to relate to you an incident which took place between Reverend Paul Fender and Maulana Rahmatullah Karanvi. Before we got independence, Reverend Paul Fender asked Maulana Hamadullah Karanvi to have a debate. The Maulana said that I don't know English, I only know Urdu. So after a few months, Paul Fender, he learned Urdu and said, okay, now I know Urdu, let's have a debate in Urdu. So during the debate, Paul Fender said that why don't you start? So Maulana Sahib said, since you are our guest, you should start first. So Reverend Paul, he said, that is your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is he dead or alive? So Maulana Sahib said that spiritually he's alive, he's Hayatun Nabi, but physically he's dead, he's buried in Medina. The next question the Reverend asked that where is your Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him now? So the Maulana thought for a while and said that he is next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Janat al-Firdaus. The Reverend asked the next question. Where was your Prophet during the battle of Karbala? So the Maulana gave the same reply with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Janat al-Firdaus. So Maulana asked the next question. Where was he when his grandson, Hussein and Hassan, may Allah be pleased with them, when they were being martyred in Karbala? Where was the Prophet? So Maulana paused for a while and then said that he was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Janat al-Firdaus. So the Reverend asked the next question. When your Prophet was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with God Almighty, when his grandsons were being killed, why didn't he request, why didn't he tell God Almighty to save his grandson? So there was a long pause. Maulana Sahib was silent. And the Muslim audience thought, Maulana Sahib gay. Now he's gone. What will he answer? There was a long pause. So the Reverend said, Maulana Sahib, 